It's a giant game in World Cup qualifying, both the name recognition and significance for these two teams. It's Argentina hosting Colombia on match day 12 here in South American World Cup qualifying, live from the San Juan del Bicentario Stadium. It's Lionel Messi, it's Thomas Rodriguez, it's Radamel Falcao, it's all the big names, and it's a giant occasion, and it's next on BN Sports. Such a funny little hero, but till you came along, we counted on our fingers and toes. Now you're here to stay, and nobody really knows. How zero really can be a hero. Get zero down, zero deposit, zero do it signing, and zero first month's payment on select Volkswagen models. Right now at the Volkswagen Sign and Drive event. How wonderful you are. This is the house of the passionate. This is the house of the brave, of those who keep fighting, who honor traditions. And this, this is the house of their beer, Casa Modelo, home of the clean, crisp taste of Especial and the rich, smooth flavor of Negra. Quality beers, brewed for those who believe in better since 1925. Welcome to Casa Modelo. Il a toujours été créatif, c'est avant tout à sa façon. Papa 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 Déjate llevar por tus instintos. El nuevo Ford Fusion 2017. This Conmebol World Cup qualifying match is brought to you in part by the new Ford Fusion 2017, Adidas, and Casa Modelo, home of the clean taste of Especial and the rich, smooth flavor of Negra. And we're underway here in San Juan, Argentina. Colombia going right to left in their yellow and Argentina in their white with blue stripes. We'll see how both of these two teams approach this one. Argentina under manager Edgardo Bauza needing a not only a result of probably a win in this game. As you mentioned on the top, Argentina would be out of the World Cup if qualifying ended today needing a home victory. Home has not been the fortress that they would have hoped for. Matteo Bonetti, early stages, what are you seeing here from the Argentina deployment? Oh, expect a high line. They're going to look to maintain possession in Colombia's half. Need to get Biglia on the ball in front of that back line as often as possible. Poor giveaway there by Banega sends Cuadrado away. Charging towards the Argentina end into the penalty area. Good turn on his left foot and instead of trying the shot, Hits the cross and it goes way with. And this is the flip side. You play that high line. Juan Cuadrado suddenly is back for Colombia. He has blazing speed down that right-hand side. Can really terrorize a defensive unit that's playing further up the pitch. That's where he does his best work in open space with plenty of green grass in front of him. And what a weapon that is for Colombia to get back now. Cuadrado. Messi at the moment lining up on this right-hand side. The challenging from Eder Balanta who replaces Fadi Diaz, it's his first ever appearance in World Cup qualifying. The 23-year-old plays his club football in Switzerland, but here the challenge just a bit reckless. Absolutely. You see that right arm going up, catches Messi, seems like on the throat. And that's probably the Colombia method so far to stop Messi, whatever needed. Now let's have a look at our starting lineups. They are presented by Volkswagen. On the ball is Ramiro Funes Mori for Argentina. He'll pair with Nicolas Otamendi at the back. On the right there you see Gabriel Mercado on the ball. The central midfield partnership of Lucas Biglia and Javier Mascherano for Edgardo Bauza who is 
under an immense amount of pressure for this Argentina side as the ball from Otamendi towards Eva Banega just a bit off the mark and it'll come all the way to Ospina. The pass out of the back attempted by Arias. Heavy challenging though from Emmanuel Mas. On Cuadrado gives Colombia a free kick. Yeah, so you're going to see Prato in that central position playing with his back to goal. And his job really is forget the goal scorer. And yes, that would be nice from your center forward. But the ability to allow those diagonal runs, Chris, from the wide positions, from a Di Maria, a Messi, Banega even, to play with his back to goal, that first touch has to be crisp and has to invite the runs from your most dangerous men, especially Lionel Messi. Header in from Funes Mori winning the ball back for... Argentina, right there. there you see that hold-up play. Messi trying to toe poke it through towards Banega or Di Maria, but intervention there from Colombia needed. So our camera shaking a bit. I imagine the atmosphere in the stadium will be something to behold. A touch there from Daniel Torres returning from injury. Plays his club football for Alaves in Spain. Part of a couple of famous victories earlier this season. You see Messi there having a tug. And Balanta. Yeah, second time, Chris. Balanta's been a bit physical here with Messi. Knows that he's in for a long day, the next River Plate man. Only his seventh cap for Balanta, so some new faces along this Colombian back line. Devinson Sanchez making his debut. Ajax player. Good interchange there between Biglia and Messi charging in off that right-hand side. Will spray what it out wide here for Di Maria. It's a great ball. He'll try the cross, and it's off of Arias. And now Cuadrado can settle here for Colombia. To poke through. Now Falcao will hold back for Carlos Sanchez, but that pass a bit heavy. Regained there by Banega midfield. Working around Carlos Sanchez. The sliding challenge is in, but I think the shirt pull beforehand has earned a free kick for Argentina. Uh, take another look here. Banega so good when he's playing behind the striker. He's actually been playing a bit deeper for his club side Inter, but you need this man in and around the final third, buzzing around. And that's exactly what it can do. Break down defenders and then a line splitting pass to one of the forward men. And there is Messi wearing the captain's armband. She has been for quite a while for Argentina. See if maybe a set piece is the way through here. See Altamendi, Funes Mori, the center backs both forward. Prato also providing height there in the area. Referee Roddy Zambrano just having a quick word there with defender forward. Manuel Mas as he crosses swung in by Messi. The header is on, it just goes over the bar. It was Altamendi, the first to it. Couldn't direct it on the target. Uh, lovely ball in swinging, plenty of pace behind it. All Otamendi has to do is redirect the pace from the ball into that top corner. You see here, he's able to get right in front of his marker, Jason Murillo. That's a great run. And a beautiful ball, as always, by Messi. Just has that little bit of room in front of Murillo. And that wasn't far off. First warning shot from Argentina. Argentina, whose goal scoring record in qualifying has been abysmal. 11 goals from 11 games with all this attacking talent coming in. They were without a goal in 193 minutes. About 70 seconds away from that being 200 minutes, which is incredible considering all the potential in the field. Absolutely, and all that potential you see on the bench. Some of the biggest strikers in Europe not being able to find a spot right here in the starting lineup. Of course, the likes of Aguero and Salo Higuain, who have done so well for their respective clubs Juventus and uh, Manchester City and right now seeing their place taken by Atletico Mineiro's Lucas Prato I was actually asked about this Bowser a few months ago he said that he does like the characteristics that Prato can bring his ability to link up and in fairness to the manager under pressure there is something to perhaps needing to find a combination of players rather than an all-star team, which Argentina can certainly field with the striking talent that they have, but it hasn't worked so far, including on Thursday night when Gonzalo Higuain led the line. Sergio Aguero came in shortly after halftime. A dispossessed there in midfield was Banega. A needed challenge there for Mascherano after Wilmar Barrios had come forward to put Argentina under pressure. Return ball is towards Cuadrado, who tried the cross, and it comes straight off of Emmanuel Mas. And when you mentioned that last game, an absolute 
Defensive shambles, losing 3-0 to Brazil, but also the quality of the Brazilian goals at probably the all-time low for Argentina so far in this qualification cycle. The throw in is towards Falcao, headed away. Will come out as far here as James Rodriguez. He'll work through the defenders if also Cuadrado. We'll try the cross and it's towards Falcao and a needed header there from Mercado is threatening on the back side was in Balanta but it'll be a goal kick. Yeah, good play from Cuadrado you saw he's just waiting for that perfect sliver of room to whip this one in. It was Falcao rather Hamas who sets it up Falcao is always going to be the target in the air he goes up and he wins that header against the defender Mercado. But just slightly behind him the ball so you see he has to kind of lean back he's not able to get all of his neck and head behind it to really drive it through with power underneath the crossbar Good I mean, chance I mean, got to it first but it was Falcao see defensive pressure there put on there from Biglia excuse me from Prato had gone all the way forward to threaten Davinson Sanchez making his first start for Colombia. First ever appearance. Did play for Colombia at the Olympics in London. Excuse me, in Rio de Janeiro. Touch just losing out. Messi now trying to work his way through traffic and the challenging from Barrios. Once again earning a free kick. Oh, that first touch from Messi. Absolute magic. He feels the pressure from his markers. About to stick the boot in. And look at how quickly his feet move to just put it right under the legs of Wilmar Barrios. And now it sets up this very dangerous set piece opportunity just outside the box. Of course, you always fancy that left foot of Messi from this position. Watch out, Colombia. And who else? And it will be David Ospina trying to ward off this free kick attempt here, establishing his wall. And Ospina knows that an ominous wind is blowing in his direction now. Once again, they'll have a go from a set piece, more like shooting distance from here. And we've seen him put these away so, so many times for both club and country. This is by no means too far out for the number 10. And it is Messi! Oh, it's a beauty! Argentina opens the scoring in a vital game! Who else? Messi! Argentina won! Colombia nil! Well, we just said it. From this position, he can be nearly automatic. And who else, when the country needed a lift, someone to finally make them realize their immense potential? It couldn't be anyone else other than Lionel Messi. It's a perfectly struck free kick. This isn't far away. Well, speed and not far at all from getting a paw onto it, but look at the bend on it as it goes right into the crossbar and down. So difficult for the goalkeeper. That one had pace, curve, everything you could ever want from a free kick. Still had everything to do. Gets it over the wall with ease. It dips, it bends. And Argentina looking like the side of old that's gone to the Copa America final, the World Cup final. You could see the lights on in the crowd. Everyone filming on their phones, knowing a moment of magic was coming. Set San Juan Argentina into a rapture. Saw there in the crowd shots after the goal. Some in the crowd bowing. They know they are witnessing a legend in real time, which forms again and again. Of course, plenty of criticism he takes for his form for his country as opposed to his club, but certainly no sign of it with that free kick. It's Colombia now going to try and levy a response. Chest down there from Carlos Sanchez, and here's Messi, who is away. Can't imagine he'll be beaten for pace too many times, and oh, it's a lovely touch. To work around Balanta, who is brilliant. Yeah, when he's in one of those moods, Chris, absolutely terrifying, especially for Eder Balanta, who's going to have to go up against a really re-energized look, Messi. 
Here's Altamendi who's has his options turned down there by Hamas and now he'll just give it away here in midfield for Torres who received the return ball there from Cuadrado. Now Falcao trying to hold the play but a good challenge in there right by the touchline and now Di Maria away and he'll earn excuse me that is Banega who earns the free kick. Banega and Di Maria operating, operating in very much the same space on, this, on that left hand side. And you'll see out of those two holding midfielders, Biglia is the one who might make the occasional forward run as opposed to Mascherano, who's going to sit deep and really play as that typical holding midfielder right in front of the back four. He'll provide the cover. Biglia a bit better with the ball at his feet. And they're always going to look for him as he is right now on the ball to just keep things composed in the center of the park. See there, Biglia instantly joining the attack. Ultimendi now going to try and tip it through towards Prato, but a bit too much on it. No, Spino will handle it. You see now, can't imagine this was part of Jose Peckerman's plan ahead of this one. Very much a defensive minded coach, even at Colombia's biggest successes, like making the World Cup quarterfinals in 2014. It's always been with solidity in the back. Now being forced to chase the game. How will they handle it? Here's Messi, another turn. Poor Balanta is just oh. having circles oh, is... Run around him at the moment. Challenge in from Carlos Sanchez, and it's a free kick yeah. for Argentina. Uh, the crowd's loving it. What a joy to watch Messi when he's playing like this, which is almost always. Every touch so smooth, and Balanta needs help. He's going to need Hamas to drop back as well and help him out because isolated against Messi, it's well, it's going to be a very long night. Charging forward there on that left-hand side was Di Maria, who's dispossessed. And now needing to turn and track back is both Manuel Mas, Javier Mascherano doing well to cover that space left behind. And now he'll return back to his holding role. Good touch around Di Maria there by Arias. He'll try and play the one-two. It's Hamas, though. With space there in midfield looking for an option to his left but no one over there to make the run and now Hamas will be able to track this down by the corner flag they'll try and hit it first time come straight off Altamendi for the throw now they do have that aerial threat now in Falcao's bit of a different look with the Monaco man coming in instead of you know Borja who's a bit more of a speedster also nice to see Colombia having given someone like Borja a chance who did so well last season and this season playing domestically in Colombia well, most of the big stars for this country are playing overseas in Europe. Borja doing well domestically and getting a chance to lead his line for his country, but he's not here today. Is on the bench, along with Carlos Baca. Another European-based player. Is, it's actually an offside there, four there from Barrios and Balanta to not hold the line. No, Let's have what? a look again at the goal. And you can look at this all night long. The wall goes up for it, but it's hit far too perfectly from Messi. Everyone jumping on that Colombian wall. It wasn't a case where they stayed down to maybe anticipate Messi trying to go under the wall, which is something he has done a few times. Expertly hit. And again, no chance for the goalkeeper Ospina. His long ball is played towards Messi, just trying to track it down, but yeah. it'll be out for the throw. They're going to go to him anytime they can down this right hand side. Really like that mismatch against Balanta. So Good Argentina ball. breaking their goalless run, but you have a look there at the bench yeah. and Correa, Higuain. Doesn't look the happiest of campers. Player who coming off the best ever season in City A for a striker with 36 goals. He beat the long-standing record of Gunnar Nordal. Now Prato here handling by the corner flag who Edgardo Bauza feels is doing his job better at the moment than even international superstars like Higuain and Aguero. You see there wearing the number seven for Argentina. Throwing is in there from 
Medical now trying to work it here intricately with Prato. Messi was offside. Opening the scoring was the Barcelona legend. A lot of people refer to him as the next Maradona. Some think he's better. Some think that Maradona for his country has done more, but those kinds of debates will can only really be had in theory. So Spina will send it away. Argentina, of course, have just fallen short in their last few major tournaments, losing in the final of World Cup 2014 and Copa America's 2015 and the Centenario tournament this summer. We do have scores from around Comebol as Edinson Cavani scores for Uruguay. It will be a pretty giant game to look at for both of these teams. Puts them up by a goal to nil over Chile. Certainly a desirable result for both of these teams. Yeah. It's the Chilean side that played their last match against Colombia, nil-nil. Very defensive looking Chile side. And repeat, see? As he crosses, swinging off the set piece, it's a hell oh. oh, and it's off the top of the net. It looks like it's Falcao who was the first to it. Once again, winning, winning in the air is the Monaco striker and nearly equalizing. Yeah, look at how he rises. You're right, second time that he's been able to win an aerial battle. This time it was a lot closer than the first attempt as he gets in front of Funes Mori, leaps over him, and he's trying to deliver this one to that near, or rather that far top corner. Beautiful ball as well from James. He's in between two defenders. They have to do better. As you'll have a look here at the goal, see the ball sent in towards Cavani, who had missed the last game due to injury. Oh. Suarez picking the ball off, playing in Cavani, who couldn't help but scoring. And who else but Suarez? Cheap giveaway, though, leading to the short field for Uruguay. But those two, Suarez and Cavani, when they're on the national team, really a joy to watch, linking up in the final third. Good finish from Cavani. He's actually been plagued by his finishing for club level at PSG. If there is a knock on him, it is that he's a bit too wasteful with the amount of chances he's gotten. He should have had a lot more goals than what he currently has. In the live table, that actually puts Uruguay top of the qualifying group at the moment, with Brazil still to play later tonight. Against the smallest Peru. country, smallest country in South America, top of the table. Usually finish in that fifth spot. Uruguay will know them for oftentimes going via the playoff route but uh, certainly don't look like they will this time. Of course, provisionally on top, Brazil still have to play their next match against Peru later on. Be in sports. I think familiar voices on that one as well, Chris. I believe we'll be on there later tonight. Have a look at a side that is on fire under the new manager, Chiche. The manager releases his lineups day before the game even. Doesn't care, doesn't care about the element of surprise, does he? Worked out pretty well for him so far with five wins from five. See there Ospino with the histrionics. You see there Mascherano needing, needing a little bandage on his face there. Just adding a bit to that warrior element to this game. On the ball there is Jason Murillo in for Oscar Murillo, who's played a lot with Yeti Mina in recent qualifications. Murillo out due to yellow card accumulation and Mina out due to injury, which he sustained in the Chile game is see there neatly worked there by Ramiro Funes Mori. Our viewers here in the United States will be interested to know he's actually a Texas raised Argentinian came to this country his parents did for economic reasons see there the header from Falcao. Spent eight years in Texas his brother Rogelio actually won a Sueño MLS contest. It got him a contract, and both of them applying their trade in Europe at the moment. We do ask that you visit our website, bnsports.com, and our Twitter accounts, so where you can see all of our highlights at BN Sports USA and at ESPN Sports. The challenge in there from Cuadrado. Play on, says the referee. Here's Viglia on the ball with Mascherano. Now Altamendi has come forward to help in the attack. Nicolas Altamendi, the Manchester City defender. He'll play in Messi. Messi with some space. Now going to cut on to his left. 
find the chip. It's oh! Oh! And it's a second for Argentina in a game they absolutely needed to win. The journeyman striker Lucas Prato has doubled their advantage. It's Argentina 2, Colombia nil. Does it get any better from Messi? Goes by the defender like he's not there. He surveys all of his options and he sees the big man, Lucas Prato, making the run off the shoulder of the defender. And look at the curve on this ball as it's played in. He honestly puts it on a golden platter for Prato, who delivers a thundering header. Once again, giving Ospina no chance, but again, Messi isolated out wide on this right-hand side. The defender does a split from how quickly Messi changes directions. And then the delivery is pinpoint onto Prato, and right away the striker's looking around to thank Messi. Good distance as well between Prato and the defender. Devinson Sanchez nowhere near to make a real play on the ball. And what a header that is as well. Aims it perfectly into the bottom corner, but that is all Messi. A goal and a fantastic assist, and here Argentina again. A run all the way out for a goal kick, and it's Prato, but the influence of Messi has been felt on this one. He's actually, Messi has missed seven of Argentina's qualifying games due to injury and various other situations, and his absence sorely missed. We'll see here how quickly he's exerted his dominance over this game. A goal and an assist, a beautifully weighted cross towards Messi. And Davinson Sanchez, the center back for Colombia, will probably regret the way that he defended that. But either way, it's a 2-0 advantage for Argentina. 23 minutes in. Flyers are into the 25th minute. We do ask that similar to how we post all of our goals on our Twitter account, on Facebook as well. Facebook.com slash USA. Of all the goals, we have eight games here on the family of networks here in BN Sports, including tonight, the United States game against Costa Rica. So if you want to see all of those goals flying in from South America, Central America, North America, we will have them here on BN Sports on our various social channels. So we do ask that you like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. See there the challenge in yeah, been from Davidson Sanchez. Very impressed by the big man, Chris. He's held up the ball well. He's looked pretty calm in possession. Prato and then the goal, of course, will do world of good for his confidence. Now Argentina looking for the jugular just 25 minutes in. Messi to swing it in. Far post. Gallo was there threatening. Nearly a third for Argentina. All this Colombian defense looking very shaky right now, especially at defending these aerial pieces. And that was the midfielder, Wilmer Barrios. Trying to get close and make things awkward, cut out the angle for Mercado. Did a good job by cutting it out. Let's have a look at the live table and how quickly one game can yeah. change everything. Argentina moving into fourth now, ahead of Colombia and Chile, who right now are losing by a goal to nil against Uruguay, which sees them top the table here on match day 12 of 16 here in Comable World Cup College. Excuse me, at 18. Oh, it's poor there from Ospina. Bit of a miscommunication there with Davidson Sanchez. And yeah, and that's what you'll get with a defender who's making his first cap in such a hostile territory. Such an important game. On the same wavelength there, Ospina and Davinson Sanchez. Still only 20 years old. And it really is quite incredible, Mateo, the way that Comebol World Cup qualifying works with only 10 nations. Yep. Everyone gets to play everyone, home and away. 18 games played over two years. The opening match day, October the 5th, the last October the 10th of 2017. It started in 2015. We're now here on match day 12, the final international break of this 2016 FIFA year. No doubt about it. Most difficult place to qualify for the World Cup. No match is easy. Even going to a cellar dweller like Bolivia, you have to go at altitude. And it's so difficult to get points from La Paz. Just goes to show you. So Paraguay getting that. 
defeat earlier today, 1-0. Other results also Ecuador winning by three goals over Venezuela. Goals from Arturo Mira, Miro, Miro Balaños, and Enter Valencia. So Ecuador now in decent shape. Sitting right now in third. Colombia can move past him with a victory, but that looks increasingly unlikely as Lucas Prato to, with a challenge will earn the first booking of our match day referee, Roddy Zambrano. And it's a fairly reckless challenge there. Turns in the trip to the book. A little bit of a frustration there in midfield between Mercado and James Rodriguez. See there, Messi, those two arrivals at <laughs> club. But yeah, Real Madrid, Barcelona. Are, no love lost, Chris. Just trying to calm things down. And Zambrano there just making sure that James doesn't escalate this. But Zambrano not backing down. Or excuse me, Mercado not backing down here for Argentina. 29 year old Sevilla defender. It's actually. Ooh. Going to be a double booking. Referee not tolerating this whatsoever. And Hannes Rodriguez is into the book. That's silly. That's the last person you want getting booked for Colombia. One of their most dangerous players, and he's absolutely livid. Let's have a look here. At out, yeah. Just why is it heavy Shot. challenge in there from Medical, but. It goes through the legs of uh, Hamas. That's what he's taking exception to from behind. Clatters into the side of the leg, even making contact with the ankle. Real Madrid man not liking that one bit. Another challenge comes flying in. And it will be a free kick here. Cuadrado earning it. It was Di Maria who, excuse me, it was Mas who came in the left back, Emmanuel Mas. So a typical amount of physical aggression in the South American qualifiers. See, see it between these two teams with mostly European-based players, but once you get back to the home continent, things change dramatically. Now Sergio Romero have barely mentioned his name so far. Making sure everything is good on the set piece. Cuadrado swings it in, but it's over. Everybody will come out for a throw. Too much on it. Has to be better, especially we've seen what can happen when the delivery is pinpointed into the box. Falcao with two headed chances. Another look at it here. <laughs> the move from Messi puts the double move on Wilmer. Barrios goes by him with ease, and then the delivery is well, what we've come to expect from this genius. <laughs> Just perfect. And it's hard to even. Point fingers at the defender there. It's the delivery more than anything. How do you defend that? Just perfect in between, yeah, in between the two center backs, and still has everything to do though. Lucas Prato he angles this one beautifully into that bottom far corner. Mascherano playing it ahead for Messi, who's now here on the right and the left, and that's a. Dangerous challenge in from Santiago Arias. And it looks like he too will go into the book. It's yellow. You could argue with how high his boot was. Perhaps even a red there. Very dangerous. Have a look. Oh, Ooh, yeah. 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 Dangerous play. Even the first one, I thought maybe that boot went a bit high right there. That's the second attempt there where he just clatters almost into the side of Messi's head. Certainly bookable. Has to pick up a yellow for that. So in a span of about eight minutes here, we've gone from zero to four yellows. Now Jose Beckerman having to come onto the pitch, have a conversation there with Carlos Baca from the bench. Not really sure what that was all about. The referee now has to really keep things under a tight control. As you see, the games become a lot more ferocious. Fouls flying in from every direction. And in any typical South American derby. We'll see tempers boil over, and that's the job of the referee to keep things cool and under control. Good topo there to win the ball for Colombia. It's Carlos Sanchez. Oh, but it's played back, and it's turned over. It's Di Maria. 
And he might have felt he should have scored. Bit of a tight angle for the shot, but a very poor giveaway. Wilmar Barrios almost gifting Argentina the assist. Again. And again turned over. Mas trying to win it back, but Guardado able to track back and win the ball back. And now Falcao with one of his few chances to hold the play. Last thing you can do against a side with the quality of Argentina is give them the ball on a short field like they just did. Not only a passage in play, but Otamendi stepping in to poke it away for Argentina. And now they'll have to start over again. Gives us a chance to catch our breaths. Give a shout out to everyone watching us all around Canada and America. The long ball is sent through, but you know one in particular is you have a look here again at this chance. Roberto Sanchez back for Barrios yeah. trying to play it back, but miscommunication there. Di Maria playing it, Banega. Just no reason. He had two Argentine players there so close to the defenders. What a cheap giveaway that is. And then Banega, very difficult for him to beat the goalkeeper. It's on his left foot, drifting away from goal. Tight angle. They'll feel halftime cannot come fast enough for that man. Jose Beckerman. It's Arias just hitting it as far forward as he can. James Rodriguez threatening. Appeals for handball. See there the frustration of James. There's Mascherano on the ball. It's pretty when you it's pretty incredible when you consider the run of form that Argentina has been on that then 25 minutes already. Two goals to the good against a strong defensive side and a side that has performed well in qualifying the last two cycles. She might have been handball against Hamas there on second time of viewing. Our referee Roddy Zambrano. With a lot to do here in this last passage in play. Smashidano going to be forced to play it all the way back to the goalkeeper. Right here, Romero. He's and the backup for Manchester United in the Premier League behind David De Gea, Spanish goalkeeper. Reading a few things in the Argentine press about how he's a regular for his country, but a backup for his club, and how he handles that. But he's a pretty good job. Oh, we have two backups here. Both sides fielding Romero, who's a backup for United, and Spina, a backup at Arsenal. Uh, charging forward here is Hamas going to poke it out wide here for Barrios. He's got Balanta behind him. He'll elect instead to play back with Hamas. Good fake there. He'll swing the cross and it's towards Falcao. Come all the way through and Mas will keep it in play. Good idea once they get to the final third, but pretty easy to read. They haven't been able to keep the ball on the ground. Colombia always going for that cross in to Falcao. And with the skill that they have, you might wonder if Hamas can keep going forward with those runs. We also don't see a ton of support coming from midfield. It's Carlos Sanchez will play here for Daniel Torres, who plays for Alaves in Spain. As you mentioned, or started in games for Alaves in which they beat Barcelona and drew with Atletico Madrid. So you know, the fairy tales, incredible results there for Torres as Alaves. Here's Cuadrado, he'll play in Falcao, but unable to maintain possession. And speaking of maintaining possession, there is Prato for Messi. He's now in the middle of the park with three guys around him, and he works his way around him, but Arias able there to handle the heavy touch. Challenge in there from Banega to try and win it back off of Cuadrado. And you see there the Colombian bench, they're going to make a meal out of all these challenges. And it is a yellow for Aver Banega. No complaint from Banega, just walking away from the scene sheepishly. It's now getting to the point where the Colombians will really try to get in. Yeah, that's a nasty foul, though. Light goes through. That's frustration from Banega. No reason for it. The ball was already out of the feet of Cuadrado, and he just slices through. The long ball is sent through, but Ospina. Excuse me, Romero watching it fly past him. There is Prato holding up the play. With Messi. Which has really been 
is Hallmark. Reading that that's what Bowser wants his strikers to do. It's not so much about the goal scoring, it's very much about keeping the play together. And for Bowser's liking, he does that job better than Higuain or Aguero does. As Messi will hit it first time, trying to play in the run of Mercal, venturing all the way forward. Trying to maintain possession. Messi threatening the defender, Balanta, but just still poking it out for a throw. See there the platinum blonde streaks through his hair for a different look. Also added a few tattoos to the arsenal as well. There is Hamas. Struggled to find regular minutes under Zinedine Zidane at Real Madrid, but he's worked his way on a semi-regular basis. Particularly in recent weeks with Casamiro out for Galacticos. And the challenge in there on Lucas Biglia earns a free kick for Argentina. Biglia playing his club football in Lazio, with Lazio, excuse me, in, in Italy. The challenge is in there a little bit of a as well from Jason Murillo. It's becoming very stop start, very physical battle. Messi hits it straight away, but dealt with there by the defender Murillo. Can Colombia fashion a chance? Already two goals down in Argentina. Poor ball there from Guadarrala, intercepted by Biglia. Now Prato will do his job holding the play up. Crowd appreciates. Mas, Mascherano. Now they'll work out of the back here with Banega on the ball. Much deeper position now for Banega. Sometimes he will drop back and retrieve the ball, try to kickstart a quick vertical ball down the pitch to get things going. Deliberate passage and hold up play. Much better from Argentina today than we've seen. In recent games that saw their manager under pressure. You'd imagine this result, if it holds, you'd see off some of that pressure, at least for the moment. That is certainly the case in international football. It's only fleeting, alleviating of pressure. And Bauza certainly could have used a result like this. Messi, Manega. Now the Olays will begin. Is Mori. Everton center back will now ignore the Olays and try and play it up towards Prato, headed away by Murillo. And now Arias will maintain possession here and a good one two. And now he'll charge out of the back. Oh, but it just gets caught in his heel. Banega. Five minutes remaining in the opening 45. Messi working through a pair of defenders. And finally, Carlos Sanchez picking the ball off. Again, again. rough treatment on Messi. That time the referee doesn't whistle it. Another incredibly difficult display of skill there. Just weaving his way so effortlessly. And then it seemed like he got knocked down. Looked like a foul in real time. To me, the incredible thing is he's in this game being followed by a horde of three at almost all times. As you'd expect, it is that sort of attention that he draws, which oftentimes will free up space for some of his other teammates to easily link up with. Throwing is towards Messi. See just how much they exchange positions. Really holding to that tactical shape they set out from the beginning. Banega and Biglia are doing well to hold on to possession in midfield. Mercado. Goals coming from a free kick off the left boot of Lionel Messi. A show-stopping set piece. You'll want to check it out on our social channels, on Facebook and Twitter. And the cross for the second wasn't much worse for Lucas Prato. You see James just a bit frustrated with his teammates, and you wonder what tactical adjustments that man will have at halftime. Another forward on, perhaps another midfielder on, but either way, Falcao frustrated there with the lack of a call. 
And he's pegging for the ball in the box every single time. He's shown the ability to beat the likes of Otamendi and Funes Mori in the air. That's what Falcao does best. Great target man to aim for in the box. Different than Baca as well. That's what Colombia has. These strikers all offer something a bit different. Borca the pace. Baca just a pure finisher. No call against Messi there of the challenge of Carlos Sanchez. Trying to turn past it was Falcao, but retrieving to get the ball was Di Maria. Good pass there in a tight area for Biglia for Mas. Played all the way back for Funes Mori. Whose rise was fairly quick from growing up in Arlington, Texas to Argentina, now playing with Everton. One of the biggest South American transfers ever is Messi frustrated there with the lack of a handball call against Balanta. Messi just asking the assistant, does he have eyes? <laughs> now even a yellow being asked for. Vanishing spray will come out as the handball was given by the referee Zambrano. Yeah, very late call. Let's see if Messi's influence had something to do with it. Was it a handball? Difficult to tell from that angle. Say it came off. No, I, it's difficult to see there. How extended is the arm? Does he extend it as the ball is coming towards him? Yeah, you see just that little jitter that he moves the arm away from the body. That's a very difficult call to make because Messi's so close to the Colombian player and. Sometimes Especially when in the rule book, intent is included intent. in the language. It didn't is seem it a like a natural it there. position as well. That's something they have to take into account. And now a chance for three on the stroke of halftime. Though it certainly, you'd have to imagine, lock this result down for the hosts. Messi to take it. Goal and assist already to his name. And now looking for a second assist. Can't imagine you have the audacity to score from this angle, would you? The number 10 for Argentina. Whistle sounds. Here's Messi. Might have been trying to score there, and it came off the defender in the wall. Looks like Cuadrado. And near post as well. Two Argentine players making the run. Otamendi. Decent position for that near post delivery. The other game in action right now in Colombia Bowl remains 1 0 to Uruguay. He's holding the play up there is Banega. Challenge in from James, and he'll play it off the Argentine player there by the corner. We will have the sprint halftime show coming up in a matter of moments. We'll show you the highlights. Breakdown. One of them in greater detail in our being optic, be an optic segment. So you're going to want to stick around. Sprint halftime show is coming up here on BN Sports. Your home for Calme Ball World Cup qualifying, and of course the away dates in Central America and Concacaf. Three of them today in the United States, away to Costa Rica. One day for us here at BN Sports is Ospina will send this free kick away. I've not seen any confirmation of how much stoppage time we'll have, so can't imagine the referee will let this go on for too much longer. Header there from Funes Mori, and that is the first half whistle. The goals produced by that man, one with a free kick on 10 minutes, and the other a great cross for Lucas Prato. We'll show them both to you on the Sprint Halftime Show, which is coming up next year on BN Sports. It's Argentina 2, Colombia nil at the half. Well, this is awful. Try it. Oh, no, that looks gross. What is that? You gotta try it. It's terrible. I don't want to try it if it's terrible. It's like mango chutney and, and burnt hair. No, thank you. I have a very sensitive palate. Just try it! Guys, I think we should hurry up. If you taste something bad, you want someone else to try it. It's what you do. I can't get the taste out of my mouth. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. Shh. Dog, 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 dog. dog. Papa! Il a toujours été créatif. Faisons tout à sa façon. Papa! Papa! Pourquoi? Pogba. 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 
possession. Goes past one. Pogba and another. Still Pogba. Pogba. This is the house of the passionate. This is the house of the brave. Of those who keep fighting. Who honor traditions. And this, this is the house of their beer. Casa Modelo, home of the clean, crisp taste of Especial and the rich, smooth flavor of Negra. Quality beers, brewed for those who believe in better since 1925. Welcome to Casa Modelo. Oh. Es la hora de mi telenovela favorita. Es el último no, no. capítulo. No, 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 no. Suena, es la final. Ni resulta. ¿Ya le habló a su hermana? ¿Sí? Oye, ¿y tu yerno? Oh. Es un bueno para nada. Teletransporta a tu suegra sin fin ni cargos escondidos. Ve a tu tienda favorita y obtén un dólar gratis en llamadas. Boss Revolution, une tus mundos. faces its biggest challenge of the season. Will they rise to the occasion and take down the strongest team on the West in order to end the year on a high note? Or will the rise continue its relentless march to the Western Conference Final and get a second chance at winning it all in the championship? Los Angeles Reign versus Phoenix Rise. Find out today on BN Sports. Looking for a daily football fix? The Extra has your back. Tune in Monday to Friday to catch the best goals, the hottest action, the most insightful analysis that spans the world of football from Madrid to Manchester. Since they haven't had a sporting director, they've won two Champions League. It's your one-stop shop to find out who's hot and who's not with a little bit of fun on the side. The Extra, your home for the beautiful game on BN Sports. The Express Halftime Show is brought to you by Sprint. Visit Sprint.com or call 1-800-SPRINT-1 to switch today. The Express Halftime Show is brought to you by Sprint. And welcome to the Sprint Halftime Show. Here are your first half highlights from this one from San Juan, Argentina. It actually got started straight away on a set piece from Lionel Messi. Yeah, great set piece here whipped in with... Plenty of pace, and it's Otamendi getting the space in between his marker to try to put this one into that top corner, but it just sails above the crossbar. Messi at the heart of everything positive for his national side, 10th minute and now. Messi from the free kick, way outside the box, tucks it in under the crossbar. No chance for David Ospina. And that's exactly what Argentina needed here to get back in their groove. Look at the way it bends, the pace. A perfect free kick strike from Lionel Messi. James trying to do the same on the other side, but delivering it for his teammate Falcao, who's finally scoring goals with Monaco. And that wasn't that far off. Able to squeeze himself in between Otamendi and Funes Mori. Then wins the aerial challenge, one of the staples of Falcao's game. Then Messi out wide, isolated. Puts all sorts of moves on his marker. And he finds Lucas Prato. It's a lovely delivery in for the Atletico Mineiro striker. And his header goes into the bottom corner. Perfection from Messi and Prato. The Express Halftime Show was brought to you by Sprint. Oh, Caroline. So, corporate put you up in a roadside motel. But with DirecTV from AT&T, you can download and binge-watch your dvr shows from anywhere. That makes you more powerful than whatever it is you just stepped in. Or that friendly dumpster diver outside. I wouldn't sit there. It's your TV? Take it with you. Now you can watch your DVR anywhere at no extra cost with DirecTV from AT&T.
Déjate llevar por tus instintos. El nuevo Ford Fusion 2017. Why are you checking your credit score? I think we could finally get a bigger place. Charades? Hey. 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 Yeah, let me check my score too. Try Credit Karma, it's free. Check out Credit Karma today. Credit Karma, give yourself some credit. El Derby de la Madonina, The Serie A on BN Sports. Determination, strategy, technique, and a lot of action. Bean Sports brings you one of the best mixed martial arts championships. Get in the cage with us. Hard Knocks Fighting Championship is here on Bean Sports. Bein Optics is presented by TireRack.com. And it is time for Bein Optics is presented by TireRack and TireRack.com. And we're going to focus right now on the opening goal from Lionel Messi, 25 meters from goal. You have a look here at where exactly the window it is that he is aiming for. And it bounces in off the crossbar past David Spina. Bein Optics was presented by TireRack.com. Peter is not smart when it comes to wearing sunscreen, but at least he was smart with his tires. He bought his Continental tires on TireRack.com. Right now, you can get a $70 Visa prepaid card when you buy a set of four select Continental tires. For details, go to TireRack.com. That's smart. And so, of course, would have been sunscreen. TireRack.com. Find, deliver, install. Smarter. My hero zero, such a funny little hero, but till you came along, we counted on our fingers and toes, now you're here to stay, and nobody really knows how Zero really can be a hero. Get zero down, zero deposit, zero do it signing, and zero first month's payment on select Volkswagen models, right now at the Volkswagen Sign and Drive event. How wonderful you are. Saturday means college football on BN Sports. Southern Miss versus North Texas. Saturday on BN Sports. Risk. Focus. We are more than soccer. Be it sports. Saturday. All the emotion of La Liga is on Be in Sports. Messi continues to prove why he's the ultimate footballer. Now his squad returns to Camp No with the take charge and gain ground against Malaga.
FC Barcelona versus Malaga CF, Saturday on BN Sports. Welcome back to the Sprint Halftime Show. Your score at the half, Argentina 2, Colombia 0, Lionel Messi and Lucas Prato with the goals. In this one, we do ask you to visit our website, bnsports.com. All of our great Comey Bowl coverage is up there at BN Sports USA. Social highlights and plenty of other great content as well. And at ESPN Sports for our Spanish channel. Once again at the half, it's Argentina 2, Colombia 0. We'll come back with the second half next here on BN Sports. The Express Halftime Show was brought to you by Sprint. Visit Sprint.com or call 1-800-SPRINT-1 to switch today. Hey, I'm Paul, and I used to ask if you could hear me now at Verizon. Not anymore. I'm with Sprint now, because guess what? It's 2016, and every network is great. In fact, Sprint's reliability is now within 1% of Verizon. And Sprint saves you 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile rates. So I switched to Sprint, and millions more have too. Can you hear that? Don't let a 1% difference cost you twice as much. Switch to Sprint and save 50% today. During Amazon Black Friday Deals Week, let the deals come to you. With thousands of deals every day, everyone will find something they love. Amazon Black Friday Deals Week. Come here. Solo Shot is a robot cameraman that automatically tracks and films you from up to 2,000 feet away. No cameraman? No problem. Go to soloshot.com. What is normal? Our normal is 200 miles per hour. It's 500 degrees. It's protection for 15,000 miles. And 40 below. Our normal is anything but. Mobile One. Energy lives here. And we're underway here in the second half. Just the one change at halftime for Colombia. Jose Pecan looking for response. Here he goes to McNelly Torres. In for Wilmar Barrios and Torres will play ahead of that kind of midfield two. Yep. Los James to drift out, drift out wide as That's well. Absolutely, what's going to happen? Daniel Torres is now going to drift back a bit and take the spot of Wilmer Barrios, who was quite poor on the ball, really beaten as well defensively. Did not have a good first half, so it's not that surprising to see Peckerman making a drastic change and going with the more offensive-minded McNelly Torres down a goal or two goals rather, with nothing to lose. Chris Whitting and Matteo Bonetti, we thank you for joining us here on PN Sports. As you see there, Ever Banega trying to hold possession of the ball for Argentina but just losing out there also can give you a real good goal McNelly Torres player who's been in and out of the national team setup on his career long ball sent towards Parato good header down for Banega to maintain possession for Argentina the option out to the left is Di Maria but it's messy right now on the ball and Biglia will allow it to run through. He's got Prato in between the two defenders. The oh. chip is towards Prato, slipping in the area. Was Davinson Sanchez, and Prato wasn't expecting that ball to fall to his feet, and it <laughs> deflected off of him wide. Unfortunate here for the Ajax defender, Sanchez. He just loses his footing at the worst time imaginable. Prato not expecting that ball to fall to him. He's again right there as he's going in for the clearance. And that's why Prato held off his run. Had Prato continued his run, this delivery from Biglia could have easily been an assist. And there, ball comes off his shin. I will say, you have seen a couple of puddles kick up yep. here. You wonder if either it rained at halftime, we didn't see any, any footage of it, or perhaps oversaturated from the halftime usage of the sprinklers. Yeah, you're right, that left side of the pitch. Let's see if it affects the ball at all. Certainly affected the players there in their footing. Yeah, it did seem very heavy as well. And now Di Maria going to use his pace to pick off Adias, and he's away. Angel Di Maria, the PSG man, tries to go across the defender, who that time was Daniel Torres, but stood his ground and did well for Colombia. First real time we've seen Di Maria in full flight as well. 
hardly on the ball in the first half, but there are no obstruction. Player standing his ground. Di Maria trying to go through. And the referee not budging. It's a good non-call that. And Di Maria is seen by some as the secret sauce for this Argentinian team. Missed the finals of the Copa America in 2015 and the World Cup in 2014. And some ascribe that as the reason why they didn't win those games. You see there, Prato just a bit offside. You see the two big name strikers for Argentina warming up. Perhaps one of them will come on. Prato, though, certainly done his job. As a through ball is played, James chasing it down, but Romero off his line to recover. Sergio Romero, the 29 year old, appeared in this now his 85th game for Argentina, started every game of World Cup qualifying, and over the course of his career has kept 38 clean sheets for his country. 48 minutes through a 39th. Here is this Argentina back line has not really seen too many threats. Here's James on the ball. For Magnelli Torres, you see his advanced position in that out and out number 10 role. Held up possession there. Here's Cuadrado. Looking for the run of Arias, but it's actually a bit wayward. We will fall though to the feet of Torres. He'll try and play in Cuadrado. Good sliding challenge in though from Mascherano. Banega losing possession there, but poor ball there. Now away went Banega on the challenge. In, excuse me, Funes Mori came all the way forward and challenge in there. Free kick for Argentina. Very attack-minded look now for Colombia. Arias moving up the pitch, essentially playing as a winger. That ball from McAnelli Torres. It was the right idea trying to find Cuadrado, but fortunately for him, it was Arias that was in the way. Di Maria back for Banega. He'll try the shot from distance, but Ospina easily behind that one. David Ospina, you mentioned. Mateo, the backup to Petr Cech for Arsenal. Yep. Although Arsene Wenger does not think of it that way. He has said in the press before, I feel I have two world-class goalkeepers. That's the way that he phrased it. See, throw in is for Daniel Torres. See what Colombia can mount here. The Argentinian support trying to get behind their team. We do ask that you send us your favorite moments from this game and every other game using the hashtag what I loved. You can send it to Abby and Sports USA. We do use it on all of our platforms. It's brought to you by Ford. Use the hashtag what I loved. Or hashtag get the gusto as the low cross was sent in. Threatening there was Banega, but recovered well by this Colombia defense. Now Cuadrado going to work around the defender, Mas. Stiff arms him as if he were an NFL running back, was away, and it actually will be a foul against Mascherano. Yeah, a bit too much. Both players know that Cuadrado, there's no chance they can catch him when he's in full flight. There's that earlier knock on Messu, does so well to stay on his feet. McNelly Torres leaning in with the elbow. Something that Messi does so well, receiving the contact, absorbing it, and able to keep his balance. I don't think anyone else does it better in world football. Here to prescribe the way that this looks tactically for Colombia, it looked more like a 4-3-3 in that first half. Now a 4-2-3-1 with Torres a bit further forward out of that. McNelly Torres a bit further forward out of that midfield. Good touch there from by Cuadrado that sends him away. Trying to work past the defender. So and it's ball. a first time shot from McNelly Torres. And you thought that was a handball, Mateo? Well, that's what Cuadrado's pointing at, but take another look at it. Is it just the hand that's on the ground as the players trying to prevent the fall, or was it intentional? Nifty moves, and yeah, mm. oh, I don't know. It's that is very close. Here's a better look at it. Yeah. See that right arm extending forward, Funes Mori. But I think he might have hit his back first. No, he's sticking out that hand. He's asking for it. Hand is clearly out to try to stop the ball. And a near spectacular effort from Di Maria on the other side. But that looked like a penalty. Yeah, you can very much make that argument. And it's actually a root one ball from Romero. Flicked on there by Prato. There you see the hold up play once again. Oh, and hit, hitting it first time. Brilliant from Prato. Holding off the defender. He knows the run's coming off his left from Di Maria. Perfect header into stride. And then Di Maria knows that that angle is going to get closed down by the two defenders converging on his position. So he has to go for 
A very ambitious effort, which wasn't that far off in the end. So chances coming both ways. You see ball is put in towards Torres here, Squadrado. Coming in off that right-hand side, will play it low now here for Magnelli. Out wide here for James from Rodriguez. Got the overlapping run available. James trying to play it back for Magnelli. Stuck his leg in there to try and play it off of Mascherano, but it's actually a foul against Colombia. Let's have a look here at the challenge for Magnelli, and now the referee going to have a word rather than a booking. You see, that's a fairly dangerous right foot left in there. Mascherano in a heap on the ground. Remains 1-1. In Chile at the moment, between Chile and Uruguay. Goals from Cavani and Vargas. Certainly implications for both of these teams on how that result goes. You'd imagine both would be rooting for Uruguay to get a winner. Keep Chile on 17 points. Colombia would remain ahead of them in Argentina with this 2-0 victory. Would jump both Colombia and Chile, but still plenty left in it for both of these teams. Header there from Arias in midfield. Otamendi sending it back. And now Prato trying to hold up possession, and he's fouled. He's done his job very well, Chris, today. Lucas Prato playing with that back to goal always, trying to hold it up. You've seen him lead in the runs. Perfect example was that last chance by Angel Di Maria. That was created by Prato. So right now, Bauza definitely looking like he made the right choice in this game. Messi winning it off there of Carlos Sanchez, trying to toe poke it through for Looks like Banega. Pronto in the area. Di Maria also on that flank. And just losing out there was Prato again. Here's Mercado. The right back all the way forward. Banega in there as well. Let's see what Argentina can fashion here. Colombia with plenty of numbers back. Messi. Good toe poke through. Mercado is in to swing the cross, and it's low. And it comes off of Jason Murillo. Still on, and again, the cross comes off of the defender. Looks like it was Daniel Torres over there, and it'll be a corner for Argentina. The Prato telling him, why did you play it short? There was a Colombian defender in between the passing lane. Should have whipped the ball in and let Prato go for it in the air. See what Argentina can do with this corner. It swung in near post. Comes off a couple of white and blue shirts, but comes out the other side for Cuadrado to play, and he does well to play past Mercado. And now Davidson Sanchez will send it away. Comes off the chest of Funes Mori, who just has to try and keep it in play, but actually went out of play before he could. It'll be a throw in to Los Cafeteros. Taken quickly. Mainly for Carlos Sanchez. A little bit more enterprising play. The long ball is sent towards Hamas, but a bit too much pace on the ball. Clap there for his midfielder, but a throw in for Argentina. Pekerman making the attacking change at halftime. Perhaps a striker changes on if see Radamel Falcao barely get a touch on the ball here in the second half. Well, there are so many options for Colombia, Baca. Miguel Borja. Luis Fernando Muriel as well. Yeah. And Muriel, you can even play him off the striker. Much better cutting in from a wide left position where he can put it on his right foot. So expect Colombia. They already made that positive or more offensive switch with McAnelli Torres coming in. Now, will he remove another player to give Falcao a bit more company up top? He's very isolated right now. Long ball is sent towards Falcao. It's a good diagonal run, but Romero off his line. Able to judge the flight of the ball and catch. See just how far forward Colombia has their press at the moment. Macnelli trying to win it off. Good challenge in there from Torres to win it for Colombia. Macnelli. Toe poke through for Carlos. Now here's Hamas weaving his way through that midfield. Toe poking it out for Arias. Good passage in play. Trying to play it in through towards Hamas. It comes off of Funes Mori, but it's Hamas remaining on the ball. Trying to run across Funes Mori once again, but it's toe poked out for a corner. Very good sequence from Funes Mori. Had he not made that sliding challenge to get the ball, Hamas would have been in a very good position inside the box against the goalkeeper. 
Adias back for Cuadrado. They take it short. It's back in towards Adias. You're going to try and play it across, and he does get something on it, but it's straight to Romero. Not decisive enough from the PSV Eindhoven right back. Two forwards to that back line coming from Holland. The Eddie Divisier. Messi now under pressure from Balanta. Challenges flying in, crowd not very appreciative. And now Messi turning around him and earning the free kick. They say there, Balanta finally get his booking. We've seen more than a few challenges yeah, from him about, on the day. About time. He's been very physical with Messi, knows he can't stop him. First half, you might remember him putting an arm up to Messi's neck, catching him there on the throat. And again, there, too much contact. And as Messi's trying to turn, he just sticks in that right leg to knock him down. So it's going to be tough for Eder Balanta. Bit of a difference playing against, you know, Messi than players he's used to in the Swiss League. Just playing straight for Basel. And, Did uh, come from Argentina where he's yeah, playing his River club play. football. Argentines, well, maybe not here as much. We'll be familiar with uh, Eder Balanta from his days, as you mentioned, in River Plate. Part of the Copa Libertadores winning side in 2015. Of course, in 2016, he went to Atletico Nacional, the Colombian club, where more than a few players in the Colombian team play their club football. And it also seems like a pipeline to Europe for a lot of Colombian players. On the turn here is McNelly. He's got Cuadrado available on this right-hand side. He plays his club football for Juventus in Italy. Sure. Italian football expert Matteo Bonetti will know a bit about. How is Cuadrado doing in, for you, Vic? For you? Well, he's used more as an impact player. He's not a starter every single week, but had one of the finer goals you will see in the Champions League. I believe it was against Lyon from a very tight angle, beating multiple defenders, and that's exactly what you can get from Cuadrado. That electrifying one on one. See there, just the patience there from Messi with any number of challenges flying in. Didn't really see anything on, so he's marshals the ball out and earns himself a throw in. You see there once well, again Qu the Cuadrado, had he just stayed off to his left with that sidestep, he actually went right into he turned into the player when he was already down to ground. So couldn't react quick enough to the defender going to ground right in front of him. And also maybe if he yeah. vociferously argued for the handball, he might have gotten it. As Manuel Mas just trying to send it in towards Messi, but well past him as we were past the hour mark here. San Juan, Argentina, they take the 2 0 advantage in the opening 25 minutes. You see, there stripping is Enzo Perez. Let's see who will come on for in a matter of moments. Oh, a few things you could do. Could take off a center back, move Mascherano a bit deeper, and put in Zopetes as one of those central midfielders uh, alongside Be a like Biglia. for like with Biglia or Banega. I would be a bit surprised if Banega was taken out. He's the one that's more offensive out of that midfield trio. McNeil. Rahamis trying to play the one two with Falcao. Comes off. Still needs to get on the defender, Altamendi. Here's Samus Rodriguez into the area. Tries to shot. Oh, it's Falcao who is the first to it. Not sure if, the, if it was flagged for offside, but either way, no? going wide. Excuse me, what I meant is wouldn't be surprised if Banega was the one taken off as mm -hmm. obviously trying to protect that 2-0 lead. Enzo Pet is a bit more defensive-minded than a Banega. Oh, look at this nice interplay here from Colombia in the final third. That is a great one, too, to set up this shot. And then... Oh, you know, Kyle is miles offside, yep. but... Miles offside, no question about it. Hamez with one of those cross-shot hybrids that if you can find a teammate good, if it can sneak its way into the bottom corner, that's well, even better. Let's see, will it be for Banega? Yep, and it is indeed. It was the change made ahead of this one, which was Banega coming in for Enzo Penes, who started against Brazil. And now Enzo will come on as a substitute on for Ever Banega. Enzo Perez, 30-year-old midfielder, plays his club football for Valencia. 
Didn't actually make, though, his first appearance for Argentina until November of 2015. Big game for Ever Banega as well coming up on the weekend. Inter Milan, the derby. Derby de la Madonnina. Do I have here for you on BN Sports? Sunday, 2.45. See if you can catch Ever Banega. Good turn there from Daniel Torres. Maintain possession. Not wide here with Arias. Team Colombia maintained possession quite a bit more in the second half. Would imagine Argentina content to see out this 2-0 advantage. Things might change, though, with a goal. Colombia, though, no closer to it after 18 minutes as they, as they were at the start of the second half. Sergio Romero. Actually, despite his 85 appearance, has not earned the most caps on the players on the field today. Lionel Messi earning his 116th, but Javier Mascherano leading the way. Second all-time behind Javier Zanetti. He's earned 136 caps for this Argentinian national team. Deputizing in the center of midfield. You mentioned the possibility of Mascherano sliding back into that center back partnership does for his club in Barcelona. And oftentimes he'll just slide in between the two center backs anyway and could turn into a back three when Argentina are on the back foot just to shore up some of those holes. Alvarado now waiting for numbers. Torres. Agnelli Torres. A pair of Torres on the field. You have to use the first names. Here's Magnelli on the ball. Back for Carlos Sanchez. The center of that midfield. Here's James Rodriguez. At the man, Balanta out wide. He plays him in, play the cross in. He'll instead play the one-two with Macnelli Torres, who again tries to slide in to win possession of the ball back off of Mascherano. And just giving away the free kick. And another change coming here. Looks like it'll be a defender coming on for Colombia. A bit surprising to me. John Stefan Medina to come on. Plays his club football in Mexico. We'll see who will come on for in just a matter of moments. Arias plays the header, but it's straight to Fidev Emmanuel Mas, the left back for Argentina. Now pressure mounting. Di Maria now has the ball edge of the area. They work around the defender, Arias, towards the byline, trying to play the cross in at an impossible angle. Now Prato going to try and defend the defenders. Prato trying to win it off of Balanta and actually gives away the free kick. As we do have confirmation of a goal from Chile. It's a second. De La Roja, and it's Alexis oh. Sanchez. What a first-time hit. The Arsenal man putting Chile in front. Oh, at the near post. This isn't good news, by the way, for Argentina. Or oh, Colombia, for that matter. Exactly. Would have most likely rather seen Uruguay just stay at the top of the pack and not have to worry about Chile. So in the live table right now, Argentina will move into fifth in that playoff position. Chile would move to 20 points, level with Ecuador. He'll move ahead of Colombia, who will be out of the qualifying picture once again with six games to go. And it's actually a number change on your scorecards, if you will. It's not John Stefan Medina, it's Jonathan Copete that comes on. Did wear the number 14 in the most recent qualifying picture, so. Copete, the 28-year-old, 20, plays his club football for Santos, but straight away, it's a chance on the other end. Di Maria! Oh, it's oh. off the outside of the post. Played in by Messi, who couldn't quite seal the victory for Argentina. Intelligent from Messi. Knew he didn't have the angle. As you see here, another cheap giveaway, though, from Colombia. They've been hurting themselves by repeatedly giving the ball back from these positions. Devinson Sanchez, no chance to stop Messi there. Knew he had Di Maria right there alongside him. And even from a narrow angle, had that gone, Chris, just a few inches to the right, that would have gone in. Ospina was going to ground. And Di Maria could have snuck that one into the top corner at that near post. Very close to doing just that. 
So just to make sure we are all clear, Jonathan Copeta, the number 15, on into the forward group with Falcao. And Daniel Torres coming off. So two central midfielders coming off. Looks like Magnelli Torres will drop back again. James, Copete, Cuadrado making up that line in behind Falcao. So plenty more attacking options. We'll see if it does any good for this Colombian group. Header is on there from Di Maria in midfield for Magnelli Torres. Sent long, but it's actually the referee pulling back a challenge on Ramiro Fures Mori. That is another booking on Radamel Falcao. A fourth booking for Argentina, Colombia with three. And he leans in with that elbow, the left elbow catching the back of the head of Falcao. It's always going to be a yellow. Bit dangerous there from the Everton center back. Only his 18th cap, Ramiro Funes Mori. Right in the prime of his career, 25 year old. Set piece swung in Otamendi, the first to it. Trying to win over there is Copete, over by the corner flag, trying to maintain possession and then trying to win it off of Argentina. It is a free kick. Enzo Pérez winning it. So the implications right now, not good for Colombia. And it does make you wonder if perhaps they will regret that nil-nil draw at home against Chile this past Thursday. Have to take three points at home. And now perhaps the impetus to chase this game even stronger is Arias. Well, trying to play it low. A couple of threats there from yellow shirts, but it'll only come out as far here as Davinson Sanchez. Here's Magnelli Torres, Cuadrado with James. Trying to return it back. Now Torres will try and poke it in towards Falcao. Now he'll try and win it again. Buzzing all over the park. Out wide for Balanta. Here's Copete on the ball. Can he get the cross in? Loses his footing. Now threatened there by Mercao. Copete comes off of Enzo Perez. And now he'll have to try and win it again off of the defender Mercao. And he once again gives away a free kick. There are well-placed microphones getting the marching orders from Edgardo Bauza. We can pretty comfortably say this is a make-or-break game for him. Might have lost his job with a loss or even a draw. And there, his trusted man, Lucas Prato, once again honoring yep. his place in the team. Earning a free kick here in a fairly dangerous area. He's doing a bit of the dirty work. There wasn't much in terms of the pullback from Murillo and Prato selling it. And he does well. He does win the set piece in the end. Good battle between Prato and Murillo. Did have a spell in Italy, Lucas Prato. Wasn't successful in it. Played for, well, played is a loose term. He was on the substitutes bench for Genoa once upon a time, but. Never was able to find success in Europe like he is now in Brazil with Atletico Mineiro. So we'll see what Messi can do with yet another set piece. Shot could be on, but more likely to send it in towards the four defenders that you see almost positionally lined up next to one another. Prato in there as well. Messi swings it in, edge of the area. Otamendi with the header, and it's off the line. Santiago Arias there, poking it away. But it, once again, Otamendi, the first two we saw it in the first half, and there, once again, threatening. Yeah, that's always a good delivery from Messi. See Otamendi there in the muck. He's able to go above his defender. Was he holding down Murillo, though? That's the question I have. And then Arias with the goal line clearance. You have a look at the live table once again. Chile with the victory moving into fourth place. Argentina with a victory here moving into fifth. Uruguay with the loss away from home still remaining a point off of Brazil and moving closer to that pack. Brazil with the opportunity to go four points clear tonight should the results in these games hold. 
Colombia moving into that second half out of the World Cup at the moment. You just wonder which big name at this point will be sent home. Still six games to play over the course of the next 11 months. Don't resume again until was Cuadrado trying to play the low cross in. Comes off of Otamendi. Still on, though. It will be a corner for Colombia. James will try and swing it in. Again, getting that danger from Cuadrado. Looks up several times. Sees two great options there at the far post. And decides to play this one low with plenty of power. Trying to curl it around Otamendi, who was... Good in snuffing out that passing lane again. Thomas swings it in, edge of the area. Comes off a couple of Argentine defenders and finally sent away. Carlos Sanchez now with the responsibility of keeping Messi off the ball. He's unable to do so, but does look like Santiago Arias did the job. Can't imagine you want Messi in that kind of position. 1v2. Over by the corner flag, won again by Prato. Challenge needed from Murillo, the defender. Have to say, full marks for Lucas Prato, the Atletico Madrid striker, who's put an incredible shift here today. Absolutely. He's worked very hard for his club. Nation, rather. He's defended well. He's pressed the defenders when they've been in possession. Complete display has his goal, which is obviously the most important thing for a striker, even though that's not really the characteristic that Bowser lined him in for. It was more his link up play, ability to bring others into the game, which he has done as well. Guadalajara earning the free kick off of Di Maria. See there, Di Maria a bit confused as to how he's lost it. See there, the challenge, and yeah, a couple of kicks there at the knee. And I think by the pose that Guadalajara struck, you can tell he was waiting for the call, and it finally came as Arias plays in Guadalajara. Has Hamas available, does play him in. Now charging away there. It looked like it was there. I believe it was Enzo Perez out of midfield. Doing the job there, dispossessing Hamas in a needed job, you must say. There's a free kick there is given against, oh, excuse me, it was Biglia doing the job there for Argentina. And James there, you see there is frustration. Yeah, this has been a summary of James today. A bit petulant, feels like he hasn't been getting the calls and this is an interesting one. Not that surprising, Carlos Baca, who's been leading the line for Colombia, mostly in this uh, qualification cycle. Bit of a different player than Falcao, who's better in the air, but for Carlos Baca, he's not been in the best form. He started off red hot for Milan, six league goals, but he hasn't scored in more than a month. Has scored twice in qualifying in the 3 2 win over Bolivia and the 3 1 win over Ecuador. You see there another reckless challenge in from a Colombian defender who was Cuadrado this time and another booking. And again, a bit reckless going in. Scything Messi. It will be Di Maria to swing it in this time. If Messi will threaten the area to try and pick up the scraps. Must say, though, it's not exactly the most encouraging sign for Colombia. The best threats of the second half have been for Argentina, including here for Di Maria to swing in. Towards the back post. Oh, bungled over in the area. No appeals there for a penalty. Instead, it's a free kick against Argentina and for Colombia. I thought Otamendi might have been bungled over there in the area. Uh, it just seems like it was a coming together. No real challenge in that from Jason Murillo. One back off the set piece by Argentina. Here's Mascherano. One-two there between Messi and Prato, and that's a great ball oh. in. 
Enzo Perez from Messi. Back for Mercado. Piglia trying to play in Prato, but a good sliding challenge in to win the ball back for Colombia. Murillo just going to send it away. Maintaining a possession there in midfield. Trying to go away with it was Copete. Now, Balanta trying to win it back, but unsuccessful. Messi working around the defender. Two and three challenges come flying in, and finally the referee pulling it back. Oh, he's getting pulled back, and then the contact from behind again. <laughs> Messi hoping the referee would have allowed play to carry on, but no chance there. Oh, have to settle the first touch, the blow by Murillo. Getting pulled back, and then you see the elbow again against the back of Messi's neck. He's been roughed up here today. And we just saw a striker change for Colombia, and now one for Argentina. Prato, he did his work. He deserves a standing ovation. He worked hard. He got his goal. You'd have to imagine was certainly earned a place in this Argentina team for the future. And they're chanting his name. They've been chanting it for about a minute now. And then the whistles come for Higuain, a player who has let down Argentina a few times and such important moments but no judging his quality you can't knock him overall he's one of the more terrific strikers in Europe Messi swings in the edge of the six yard area a couple of players threatening including Otamendi but Ospina able to catch Higuain for his country 33 international goals and 67 appearances so about a it's great half goal a game is great Balanta trying to play it straight away for Baca but Romero got in ahead of him Carlos Baca unable to get a touch around the keeper. Trying direct, but nothing seems to have worked so far. Perhaps Higuain can get a third that would cement this set of three points for the Argentinians. Balanta getting in ahead of Higuain to win the ball off of him. Carlos Sanchez, oh, it's a lovely turn. Now Hamas is away. Get another good turn, and he'll poke it through for Arias. Vilda Cuadrado now to run onto it. See Argentina getting numbers back. Cuadrado trying to swing it in. Comes off of Funes Mori, and Cuadrado will have a second time of asking. Takes a deflection again, and Higuain coming all the way back to win possession for Argentina. I have to say, a complete performance from Argentina. In the first half, it was the attacking intent. and in this second half, they have shut the game down, and allowing Colombia to fashion too many chances. As I mentioned, we have quite a long time until the next international break. Doesn't come until March. Yeah. March the 23rd, Argentina will play Chile. It what is now shaping up to be a pretty pivotal game for both teams. It do not get easier for the Argentinians. Hamas now trying to turn around Di Maria does successfully. Arias. Cuadrado. Hamas. Working the triangles. Now gonna play in Baca. Into the area, Carlos Baca warding off the defender, now going to run towards the byline. A couple of challenges snapping in, and the little cross is attempted. It comes off of Otamendi, it'll come out for a corner. A lot more support now for the striker. Cuadrado out wide, James and Magnelli making those central runs. He was onside, Baca timed his run nicely. And could, did good here to shield off the defender. Had that option in the middle of the box, but it was uh, Copete who was going to ground, even if that ball had been swung in successfully. Cuadrado to take the corner. It's in. Header comes in. And it was with plenty of force behind it. Murillo, the closest to it, but it came off a defender on the way in. It'll be another corner. Taken short. James swinging it in. Another header attempted. It's away there by Argentina, but only as far as Murillo. Edge of the area. Back for Carlos Sanchez. Good turn. Maintaining possession. Left footed cross. Takes a Argentina, an Argentinian header on the way through. Or was it Copete that got to it? They're going to say it's a goal kick. Let's have a look at the first corner. It was Altamendi who got to it. Then the second time here, Sanchez. And just offside as well, Copete, the one who got the header onto it. You see Edgardo, Edgardo Bauza. Here's Hamas. It's a poor ball. Balanta to run back for it. One last change coming here. 
Looks like it'll be Marcos Acu Acuna that will come on. And it will be his first ever cap for Argentina. Plays for Racing. We'll see what the final change will be. Not the only, not the first player to earn his first cap. Copete on for Colombia, earning his first. And Acuna, more of an attack-minded midfielder. Also play out wide if needed. Otamendi coming forward to win the ball for Argentina. He's more of a left winger for Racing Club. And, uh, let's see if it will be for Angel Di Maria. Straight swap. Enzo Perez. Going to let Messi hold on to it. Oh, it's a lovely flick for Enzo. But a good challenge across from Murillo. But Messi winning it off of him. Messi charging into the area. Plenty of options available. He'll take it with Di Maria. And it's three. Surely sealing the three points for Argentina. Angel Di Maria. It's a second assist to the night from Lionel Messi. Who has been hugely influential for Argentina. It's Argentina three, Colombia nil. It's been an absolute masterpiece from Messi. A goal, two assists. And this one winning the ball back in a wide position. Look at his calmness on the ball. He doesn't rush the pass. He's waiting for that perfect angle. He's waiting for the Colombian defenders to go exactly where he needs them to be. And that's Converge on Higuain, who was the nearest option to him. Lovely here, the back heel just to flick it on again for Enzo Perez. Here's a better look at it. And then the play continues. And right here, what is Colombia doing? That is lazy from the back line. And there he's waiting for the defender to converge on Higuain. Davinson Sanchez cuts out the near post. But no one on Di Maria. And he just thunders through it with that left foot. And that is the last meaningful action of this match for Di Maria, who come off for Acuna, who earned his first ever yep. cap. And just as we see that third goal, we've also seen a third goal in Chile. We'll have it for you in a matter of moments. It's a brace for Alexis Sanchez. Wow. And straight away, Colombia going from bad news to worse news. I'll show you that goal in a matter of moments. And all smiles for Argentina. And what a exactly the kind of performance that they needed from Messi to lift the country out of this rut ever since the loss in the Copa America Centenario final against Chile. Take a look at the goal. Chile, Uruguay, the second from Sanchez. Did so well there to hold off two defenders. Look at that. It's brilliant from Sanchez. Settles it lovely into stride. Holds off two Uruguayan defenders and then a fine finish at the end. Coates and Pereira unable to stop him from it's been a, a 3-1 game. It's been a strange World Cup qualifying cycle when you think that the last two uh, Copa America finals were between two nations that looked to be risking even going to the World Cup, Argentina and Chile. It was Murillo the one who wasn't able to get it away. And the only defender back was Davinson Sanchez, and he had to cut off the potential pass to Higuain. Arias couldn't get back in time to cover on the far post run, which was Angel Di Maria. We should say that the six teams at the top of the table right now all made the World Cup in the last go around because Brazil were the hosts, and so they were afforded an extra spot for South America. As if you do want to see that Di Maria goal again, or perhaps that Alexis Sanchez goal with full commentary, it is on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash BN Sports USA, also on Twitter at BN Sports USA. So if you use that BN Sports USA handle, you get us on Facebook and Twitter. But one of these teams is going to have to be let, left out at the moment. It is Colombia after match day 12. Still 18 points available for everyone, so a lot to play for, but. Colombia will have to recover their spot, but who will they take over? The Chile, they'll be on 20 points. Argentina will be on 19. Ecuador will be on 20. We'll see if Colombia can mount this challenge 
to get into the World Cup in Russia in 2018. Surely on this evidence, he might be staying home. See, ball was attempted towards Messi. And incredibly, Mateo, they haven't even really fashioned too many great chances in this one either. With it all to play for in the second half, just not been able to find a way through as we'll try the long route towards Baca, but Romero catching. We've talked so much about this attack and Messi and what Argentina have been able to do in the final third, but also defensively. A big improvement from that central defensive pairing of Otamendi and Ramiro Funes Mori, and more magic from him. Spina coming off his line, going down into the weight of the challenge, and the referee giving a free kick against Acuna. There was a good chance for Acuna to showcase that pace that he can bring. Messi knew right away to just lob it up and let Acuna run against this uh, defender. See more than a few of those cheeky little turns from Carlos Sanchez to maintain possession. Sanchez relegated from the Premier League last year with Aston Villa, who were by far the lowest points earners, the worst in the Premier League era, but now playing in Italy with Fiorentino. The long ball is sent towards Higuain to try and maintain possession, but Sanchez coming across. Is there even a consolation goal on the cards here? Can't imagine we'll have too much stoppage time. We have seen plenty of bookings, a goal here in the second half. Eight bookings in total on the day, so plenty of physical aggression coming to pass, and the long ball is attempted for Cuadrado. If you're watching us on BN Sports in Espanol, we do ask that you stay tuned. 9.15, we'll have Peru hosting Brazil. Chiches men has taken f 15 points from their first available 15 under their new manager, and they are flying. We'll see if they can take their act to Peru. Also, your other option on the BN Sports family of networks, the United States, after a 2-1 loss to Mexico to open the hex. Yeah. Probably needing a result in a place that they've never won, Costa Rica. You can watch it with Phil Shane and Thomas Rongen. Coming up at 9 p.m. Sanchez going to try and play in Hamas. Good challenge in there from Otamendi, but he actually gives away a free kick in the process. Look at what Otamendi did there. He instantly shifted off to his right, knowing that Hamas was going to try to cut it on his left foot. Very much a one-footed player, Hamez, always looking to put it on his favored one and strike at goal. And Otamendi read his mind right there, so quick to react. Knew exactly what Hamez wanted to do. And we'll see if perhaps on the set-piece opportunity he can place one in a corner that will give Colombia a consolation goal and ruin the clean sheet for Argentina. Argentina came into this one 193 minutes without a goal. They'd conceded in each of their last four, breaking both of those runs here tonight. With a convincing 3 0 over Colombia as it stands right now. Hamas to take it. Oh, and it's off the, I believe it took a nick off the outside of the post. Romero rooted to his line. Could have been one for Colombia, but either way, a goal kick. It's been very frustrated, Hamas. That was the closest chance for him. Even though probably not enough time to mount a comeback, and that was perfectly struck. And Hamez really infuriated with himself. Knows how close that was. Only a consolation goal. But it's been Lionel Messi who came back after a spell out injured for Argentina. Played on Thursday night, was not influential in their 3 0 loss to Brazil, but certainly was tonight. A goal on a free kick and two assists to Lucas Prato and Angel Di Maria they have given Argentina this advantage. That will see them take a needed three points with them. Back into the qualifying places in the Comebol table. See there just how frustrated James is with himself and the way this game has played out. Can't imagine we'll have too much time left. Magnelli Torres. 
for Cuadrado. Gonna work around the defender. Acuna on the turn, drawing plenty of attention. Back for Arias. Gonna try and play the one-two with James, and instead he does finally return the pass. Arias to play the cross in, going across, and Funes Mori sliding in and putting the finishing touches on a great defensive job done by that center back partnership. Quickly taken, Hamas. Place it high in the air, plenty of yellow shirts on that back post, but the header going well over the bar and should have the final whistle in a matter of moments. And there it is. Edgardo Bauza turned to Lucas Prato to lead the line, but more importantly, that man, the number 10, Lionel Messi. A goal, two assists, in a pivotal game for Argentina. Who else but that man? Well, this was an Argentine win that was desperately needed with Messi's name all over it. He set up the two goals. He scored the other one. And exactly what this country needed to get out of the rut and have hopes for Russia 2018. Argentina wins by three goals to nil. That'll do it for us, for our great being sports crew, for my broadcast partner, Matteo Bonetti. I'm Chris Winningham signing off. Argentina and Lionel Messi with a pivotal win here in World Cup qualifying. This Conmebol World Cup qualifying match was brought to you in part by Casa Modelo, home of the clean taste of Especial and rich, smooth flavor of Negra. TireRack.com. Find. Deliver. Install. Smarter. And Volkswagen. My hero, zero. Such a funny little hero. But till you came along, we counted on our fingers and toes. Now you're here to stay. And nobody really Zero really can be a hero. Get zero down, zero deposit, zero do it signing, and zero first month's payment on select Volkswagen models. Right now at the Volkswagen Sign and Drive event. How wonderful you are. There are countless, not very smart things we do with our car. Hey, my man. <laughs> but with TireRack.com, at least you know you got your tires right. Right now, you can get a $70 Visa prepaid card when you buy a set of four select Continental tires. For details, go to TireRack.com. Want to go for a bike ride? <laughs> TireRack.com. Find. Deliver. Install. Smarter. In 1925, the people of Tacupa, Mexico, created a beer to celebrate a revolution. Modelo Especial. Today, it's the fastest growing beer in America. Why? Because it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters what you're made of. Modelo Especial. Brewed with a fighting spirit since 1925. For a taste that's pure gold. Hey, I'm Paul. And I used to ask if you could hear me now with Verizon. Not anymore. I'm with Sprint now. Because guess what? It's 2016 and every network is great. In fact, Sprint's reliability is now within 1% of Verizon. And Sprint saves you 50% on most Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile rates. So I switched to Sprint, and millions more have too. Can you hear that? Don't let a 1% difference cost you twice as much. Switch to Sprint and save 50% today. Il Derby de la Madonina, the Serie A on BN Sports. Every form of life is believed to reach the same biological potential. In sports alone, there were no African Americans in baseball, in football or basketball in 1930s. Yet some kinds are born with an incredible disposition to be all obstacles and fears. 
when I was given the opportunity to leave the ghetto, I proved to be someone great. Bending the existing rules and creating the new standards of the world. Nos creíamos que podíamos ganar a cualquier rival. Nos sentíamos protagonistas en el campo. And although they really, really wanted to beat me, I think they thought about being the first to be second. A la victoria para pared, es imposible. As an American, nobody gone to Europe and the game's on. Being legends. The untold stories of the greatest of all time. Every Thursday on BN Sports. Beautiful Estadio Olimpico Metropolitano in San Pedro Sula is the home for this encounter, the second round of matches in the Hex and CONCACAF World Cup qualifying. Honduras looking for a big win. They will be taking on Trinidad and Tobago, the Catrachos versus the Soca Warriors, and both teams needing the three points after losses in the opening round of the Hex. George Dimatelis alongside Rafael Unsain. And Rafa, it's very important that these two teams win because you don't want to start the Hex with zero points after the first two games. No, and they have to wait till March for to do that. So Honduras lost 0-1 to Panama. Trinidad lost 0-2 to Costa Rica. A must win for both. They need to add points. They don't want to be left behind in the chance to go to Russia 2018. Let's look at the lineups and let's see how many changes the coaches make for this one. Honduras with Escobar in goal. Not many changes. Figueroa, the captain, still in the back line. Oscar Garcia is back in his starting lineup. So mm, an interesting lineup for Amado Guevara, who's still in charge because Pinto is suspended. The Colombian coach is suspended for this one. Yep, as for Stephen Hart and Trinidad and Tobago, they've made just one change from the side that lost in Port of Spain to Costa Rica, and that is Trevin Caesar, the man who plays for Orange County Blues in the USL. He is in for Jamal Williams. So just one change for Trinidad and Tobago, who coming into this game have given up eight goals in their last three World Cup qualifying matches. So they're going to have to tighten things up defensively against the Honduras squad, trying to pick up a goal and trying to pick up three points. Don't go anywhere. First half kickoff from San Pedro coming up next. My hero, zero. Such a funny little hero. But till you came along, we counted on our fingers and toes. Now you're here to stay. And nobody really knows how Zero really can be a hero. Get zero down, zero deposit, zero do it signing, and zero first month's payment on select Volkswagen models. Right now at the Volkswagen Sign and Drive event. How wonderful you are. This is the house of the passionate. This is the house of the brave. Of those who keep fighting. Who honor traditions. And this, this is the house of their beer. Casa Modelo, home of the clean, crisp taste of Especial and the rich, smooth flavor of Negra. Quality beers, brewed for those who believe in better since 1925. Welcome to Casa Modelo. Papa! Il a toujours été créatif, faisant tout à sa façon. Papa! 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 Pogba. Pogba wins possession. Goes past one. Pogba and another. Still Pogba. Pogba. Déjate llevar por tus instintos. El nuevo Ford Fusion 2017. This CONCACAF World Cup qualifying match is brought to you in part by the new Ford Fusion 2017, Adidas, and Casa Modelo, home of the clean taste of Especial and the rich, smooth flavor of Negra.
Jair Marufo is the referee for this encounter. Estadio Olimpico Metropolitano. Honduras versus Trinidad and Tobago. Round two of CONCACAF World Cup qualifying the head. Colombian sports, George DiMatelis alongside Rafa Unsain and Rafa. This is a big game for both teams after both teams suffered losses to open the hex. Both lost at home, 1-0 against Panama here Honduras and 2-0 Trinidad at home against Costa Rica. So a must win for both sides here. Obviously. The match has begun. Honduras, they obviously the home team. They are in the all white kits with the blue trim, blue numbers. La Picolor as they are known. They will be attacking from left to right. Meanwhile, Trinidad in those red and black kits with the white numbers attacking from right to left. Early on, we see Honduras attacking as Bonilla Garcia. Testing the defense of the Soka Warriors. We throw him there by Brian Bekeles. Bending service inside by Jorge Claros. And down the far side, Romel Kyoto. Unable to control it, but it does lead to a corner kick for the Catrachos. From the start, Honduras obviously needs a win. There you have the assistant coach, Amado Guevara, since Jorge Luis Pinto is still suspended. And they made a few changes. The most important change is that. It's uh, Bonilla Garcia back in starting lineup, wide on the right flank. Yep, one of three changes made in response to the loss to Panama. Here's a service sent in. Defensive header cleared away there last minute by Daniel Cyrus. He plays for a W connection in Trinidad. Jair Marrufo. The, the other. Charge. George, let's watch at the lineups and we'll explain to everyone the changes from each side from Honduras. Malo Guevara is the coach, obviously, because it's been to suspended. Escobar stays in goal. Aguirre is back as a left back. The two Figueroa's no relation, Henry and Minor in the center backs. Beckel is on the right. Espinosa is back in midfield next to Claros. Martinez stays in the lineup. Kyoto. And there you see Oscar Garcia. That's Boniek. It's almost a 4-3-3 for Amado Guevara slash Pinto. Yep. As for Trinidad and Tobago, the Volkswagen lineup, it is Williams and Gold, the back line of Bateau and Mitchell, with Cyrus on the right and Aubrey David on the left. In the midfield, Kevin George, the Jacksonville Armada man, alongside...